Right, this is a spelling test. It's designed for uh, students to come along and type in words from 1 to 20. It has the name of the person, in this case it's my name up the top there, in this case the name of the person there, and the words that they type in, and it gives an indication as to whether they got the words correct or not. It also counts the number of mistakes that they have made. Now, the way this is being done is that I've got a set of words over here and it's testing to see whether those words they're actually invisible here but if I click on that you can see the first word is uno and the second word is chariot so let's just go and see how that's actually working um, so if I type in the first word and if I type in one instead of uno it says oops oh, I made a mistake and it's recorded it up over there uh, I should have typed in uno if I correct that now it says yes I've got it right I do actually have it right but it has actually still recorded the fact that I made a mistake the second word was chariot let's get that one oops I was a bit too quick there uh, let's go back and get it right chariot oh I've got it right now um, so I've fixed it up but I didn't get it right before I pressed enter so my first response was actually making a mistake so it's going through and checking to see whether I get the answer right or not uh, the next word was drag so uh, we'll go and get that one correct actually I meant to get chariot right the first time but um, I was a bit too quick so there we go drag it says yes and it hasn't recorded it as being a mistake if I went back and change that now it would record it as being a mistake so um, let's go and, and say no or not that'll do uh, and it's changed to not and it's now gone to say that there was a mistake made in there and I'll go and fix it back again and there it is it's back to yes so I've got the word right but it does still record the fact that I made a mistake somewhere along the line with the input that I was putting in if I just delete the whole thing it gets rid of my yes and that's fine but it doesn't delete the fact that there was a mistake that was made over here. So what I've tried to do is to make a system for getting students to uh, input words, a dictated spelling list, and I have all the students on the one sheet. Uh, they're on mul one spreadsheet, but multiple sheets, so they choose their own one. So basically they should go in uh, to their name, find their name, their name will be up the top as well as down the bottom down here, and they type their words in. And at the end of it, I'll end up with a set of scores. So I've got the names of the people along here, and I can see what the scores um, that they've got. Now, this, in actual fact, is the number of um, mistakes that they've made. Um, so I'm actually looking at 20 uh, words, so there were 17 wrong. That was... Uh, what was being noted in there so um, basically what we're looking at trying to do is to just try and get a, a record of what the children are doing when they're doing a spelling test and uh, if we can we'll let them fix their mistakes because we certainly want them to learn from their mistakes and fix them but we do want to get an indication as to whether their first attempt uh, or a subsequent attempt turned out to be incorrect um, so it's a way of more of a form of spelling practice than it is of anything else uh, there is protection set on these so that the children can't get in and change the formula that's going on in there but um, I couldn't stop them from going into somebody else's one however uh, we do actually have a way of seeing who's doing what so uh, with Google Sheets one of the nice things is you see I can actually come here see they've changed default here they've got it right now we can actually go back and if we right click on this we've got a version history which we can have a look at now and we can see that the original spelling was changed to get it right so it does give us a way of seeing uh, if somebody else perhaps had gone to one of the sheets and changed somebody else's words we'd be able to track that back down uh, if you had some malicious behavior going on you'd be able to follow that um, but um, it wouldn't stop somebody from being very quick and going and seeing what the answer they've got and, and coming back to their own sheet and and typing it in so um, it's certainly not foolproof in terms of uh, protecting you against people cheating but it does minimize it a little bit so this video really is just to show you how I've gone about doing some checking I really like the idea of giving some online response immediate response to uh, an answer now whether this is done with math or whether it's done with uh, in this case spelling is up to you uh, I do a very similar thing in terms of some math tests so what I've got happening here 
is an if statement. The if statement is quite simple, um, but it looks complicated here because there's actually two parts to it. This is the main part of the if statement, and it's going away and it's checking to see whether in the master list in cell A2, uh, does what we've typed here say the same as what's in the master list on A2. So back over there on that master list in A2, it said the word UNO. Let's actually have a look at these so we can actually see. So we'll just um, colour the background in now. Oh, wrong colour. That's not a good colour. Let's do a green so we can... Even that's not a very good colour, is it? Blue. Make it easy to see what the words were that were sitting in there. Um, so I just had the words invisible in case they went over to this page. I could have hidden them, um, but it's just easier to have them invisible by having them uh, in a white font. Um, so we can go and see what it is that they've actually um, uh, typed in. Um, we can check this against the cell in the master list. And if it's correct, we can say yes. And if it's not correct, we can say, oops, now you can put whatever you like within those quotation marks. Uh, I've just used those two. Uh, now, what's happening in front of that, this part here, is it's just checking to see whether there is an answer there or not. Uh, if there is no answer there, we don't actually want anything to indicate over here. We don't want to say no, um, because they haven't put an answer in yet. So we're waiting to see whether an answer is being put in. And as soon as we've got that answer in there, then we'll go away and we'll have a look and uh, we'll give the yes or the no. Okay. Now. The trick, though, is to determine whether they've changed their answer or they've deleted an answer. So if I've deleted that to try and say, oh, well, I just didn't bother to answer that. No, no, that's no good. So if I'm here and I just press enter and move on, it's not changing this one to a zero. So I've got to have actually entered something to get it to record that there was a mistake. And the way that's doing that is, again, there's a double part to the if statement. The first part of the if statement is going away and having a look and saying, well, is there something actually already in there? If there's something already in there, now we're going to trigger uh, some behavior. So if it's not equal to nothing, if it's not equal to nothing, we're going to have a look in B4, and that's B4 here, and see whether there was an oops Put in there. If there was an oops put in there, it's going to put a 1 into this column here, C. Uh, and if there wasn't an oops, it's going to put whatever was already in C4 back into C4. So this is a circular reference. So what it's doing is it's not letting it, it's going to keep repeating whatever is in there unless we find an oops over here at some stage. So it doesn't let itself get changed. The only way it can change or update is if it sees an oops in there. Otherwise, it's going to keep putting the same thing back in. Now, that kind of circular reference, um, most spreadsheets, they like to go away and complain about that. So to be able to get that circular reference in there, or to allow it to happen, you're just going to have to go to Spreadsheet Settings and come down to Calculation. And in here, we've got to have iterative calculation set as on. If that set is off, then the spreadsheet will complain. It won't let you do it. So make sure that iterative calculation is set as on. And then that will let us to write back into a cell the same information that's already there. And that will stop children from being able to change um, the uh, value if they've changed the answer. Up here, fairly simple, we've just gone ahead and summed the number of uh, mistakes that we had made. So every time we've got a 1 in there, we're adding that up. So I've got three mistakes so far, so that's showing that there were three mistakes. Um, and over here, I've made the word mistakes turn up if there is uh, actually something going on there. The only way I can get rid of these numbers or reset those back to zero is actually to grab one of these ones here and actually just copy it back up. And when I copy that back up, uh, it resets all of those to zero. My mistakes has gone away, and I've got no issues there. So if I get my word wrong again now, I just put in the word, the letter D, there's my oops, and it's brought my one mistake back up over there. So I can reset those just by copying that formula back up. 
The other tricky thing that's been going on in here is to get this name up here and to um, be able to record in my master list the scores that I've been getting over here. See I've got um, only one mistake so I'm listed as 19 over there. I might want to be able to calculate that a different way um, to find out the number correct. So up to you. I haven't really refined that one too much at the moment. but. To get this name here and the names along the bottom, what we're doing is we're going to go and just rename one of these. Now I actually had 30 children in this class, so I, I made 30 of these. I've hidden most of them at the moment, but I'm going to go and change this one here. So I had them named from S1 to S30, uh, and then once I've got that done, actually we'll come back to the master. You can see down here in the master. Um, I've got all of these other ones, so that's, this is S30 that's sitting there. That's the one I'm going to modify. Um, so what I need to do is to give it a name, so I'm going to go and rename that and call it Anthony after me, and I press Enter. So it's renamed it there, but nothing has actually happened. Nothing's happened up here, and nothing's happened on my master sheet. To get this to update is actually quite tricky. There's no physical way. Uh, I can't actually just do an update um, in Google Sheets in the same way I can in Google Excel. The easiest way to get it to update is to copy and paste it back again. So I'm just going to highlight the whole thing here, go up to Edit, and I'll go Copy, and I'll go back to Edit, and I'll go Paste. You could use the shortcut keys to do that. And that just pastes the same thing again, but that forces an update. So that's now gone and given me this Anthony exclamation mark dollar B1. Now that B1 dollar, uh, that's referring to the cell up here. So what I've asked it to do is find the cell reference of this spreadsheet. And to do that, it needs the name that it sees down there. So uh, here, it's gone and found the cell reference of the sheet Anthony and this of the uh, actual cell of B1. Okay, so the same way this one here has done the same for, for B1. So it's looking for that absolute address. Now, when it brings that back, it brings it back with the second part, the uh, exclamation mark. Now, I don't want that. I don't want to see that. So I'm going to strip that off by just using a length command. So those that's five characters long. So if I remove five characters from whatever is in this cell, I end up over here with a nice raw name without the rest of that messy code on the end. And then all I have to do is back up the top here, go and reference the master sheet, cell D0, okay, and pop it in here. So that's what's happened. The master sheet, there we go, that's D0. 30, it's picked that up and popped it into the top of this. So now when I'm when I've clicked on my sheet, I can easily see which sheet I am. If you're looking down the bottom here, it might get a bit confusing. Which one am I on? Am I, is this Gordon? So, you know, it's got to be highlighted down there. But I found it easier if I put it up the top so I could see it over there. So really what I'm trying to illustrate um, is there is a number of ways that we can bring things across. Now, getting the cell reference um, from the sheet name is much easier to do in Excel. This was the only way I found I could do it in Google Sheets, but um, it seems to work reasonably well. I just had to have a two-step process to be able to pull it across, and I had that extra step of having to copy and paste. I couldn't get an automatic update based on when I changed the name down here. So if you change any of these names down here, go back to um, this column and just click on it and copy it and paste it straight back down onto it. And once you've got this made, you'll be able to then go back and you can change the word list um, for any other word list. So make a master sheet and have that sitting there and then each time you want to use it with the children, put in a new word list and paste it uh, or copy it out for the students to be able to work with and um, you'll be ready to go. Um, so it's a little bit of a an effort to get it done the first time, but after you got it done the first time, you've got something that you can reuse pretty well. Uh, if you're copying out of your master each time, then you won't have to do the reset of each of these. Um, so that's why using a master is better. And make sure you set protection on this cell up here so they don't change that, and these two columns here so they don't change those. Do that before you copy each of these cells. So once you've got the first 
uh, spreadsheet made that's got the template basically of the name over here and this part then go back and set your, your protection and then you can go through and duplicate your 30 copies of that that uh, is referred to over in the sheets over here hopefully fairly straightforward good luck